able to record in so long but I tell you what I busted my ass and I got all the videos recorded for July um, so I know it's really late um, and I know you guys probably didn't expect to hear from me in July but let me tell you July 2017 a year ago is when I started recording monthly videos and the Capricorn in me just could not allow me to just not record for July like you know, a part of me felt like I should just jump right to August, but no way, like cancer season happened, okay? July happened, and I know we want to just leave July in July, and I know it's very much close to August, but I will be doing August videos very fucking soon, um, but no, July, I felt so, so much energy as an empath for the month of July, you know? So definitely wanted to record messages for you guys, um, so for those of you who are led to watch this video, you know, there's, I always believe that um, time doesn't exist to tarot, you know, so there could be messages in these videos for you guys and you never know. So if you're led to watch the, the July videos, even though it's very, very close to August, thank you so much because I worked very hard at these messages and um, I just think that, you know, I just care about all you guys. I care about all my viewers and my subscribers, so I definitely wanted to touch base on how the hell July went for all of us, okay? So, as always, I'm going to have my intro video, you know, um, explaining what's, what to look forward to in the reading. All the astrology information for, in general, the planets are going to be in this video. And then in the personal readings, in the next videos, um, there's a little bit more of personal stuff for Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, all the signs personally. But as far as the collective, we had a lot going on. So, something I want to say um, immediately here is that Cancer, you know... July is shared by Cancer and Leo. So we're going to be talking a lot about Cancer and Leo energy in, in the houses that it happens for with, in your sign. You know, as an Aries or a Taurus or a Gemini, these houses matter. So we go into detail about that. Um, and to me, it's just really interesting, the whole Cancer-Leo cusp that we went through because this is the moon and the sun. This is the mother and the father energy. This is masculine and feminine. So this whole month was a big giant eclipse because of the moon being ruled by cancer and leo being ruled by the sun so the energy we experienced in july anyways was a huge eclipse it was the moon becoming the sun and the sun you know becoming the moon and we even had eclipses in july we entered the month with a grand water trine okay between pisces cancer and scorpio we had the sun in cancer jupiter was in scorpio and pisces had neptune so you know, the beginning of the month was extremely emotional. I mean, cancer season was extremely emotionally exhausting, and at the same time, it was very enlightening. So a lot of the things that I've been telling people on my social media is that cancer season actually awakens the soul because the sun is where the moon is comfortable. So when the sun is in cancer, it's an opposite energy because cancer is ruled by the moon. So awareness, the sun, is, is basically illuminating our soul. So everyone has a moon sign. And so I'm going to go ahead and tell you that you really want to watch for your moon sign for July. So I know that I'm late telling you this, but all I could keep thinking about in July is how much I was resonating with my moon. So I resonated very strongly with the Taurus reading. So that's just a tip. From now um, moving forward, it, you know, you might resonate way more with your moon sign because the moon has been awakened collectively. So for instance, I have a Taurus moon. And the moon, my shadow side, you know, I'm watching more for the Taurus readings now because I know that because of cancer season and because of these eclipses, I resonate more with my moon. So you might want to check out for your moon. Um, now that it's Leo season or, you know, you know, when you guys watch this, it's going to be Leo season. So now, now that it's Leo season, you guys might want to watch, you know, the sun. Like it's going to be our sun is awakening now, but we have to awaken the soul before we can awaken the body. The, the, the sun controls our physical body. So there's been a subconscious soul awakening in cancer season. And so I just wanted to share with you guys that you guys might want to watch for your moon sign this month if you, if you know your moon. Okay, that's just a little tip. You might want to watch for other tarot readers too. You're going to resonate more with your shadow side. The moon is what we hide. The moon is like what we feel at a soul level. 
So, you know, back to this energy that we started the month under, we had a grand water trine. So that's why, you know, there was a lot of emotion in July because the water signs were in a trine in the sky. So a lot of trinity when it comes to our emotion, very powerful stuff. Not to mention, July is the start of eclipse season. This is when these eclipses started rolling in, right? We had that full moon in Capricorn at the end of June, so we entered July with that energy, but it was very, very overmatched by water. So this is eclipse season, you guys. This is retrograde season, okay? So I want to mention to you real quick here that I am offering retrograde readings. I am definitely back recording. So if you guys are interested in a personal reading with me, thank you so much to those of you who got personal readings with me and who were patient. You know, I'm not sure if you guys watched my last videos last month, but um, a lot has been changing with me. I temporarily moved and I moved back and I moved back and I moved back and I was around um, a situation that didn't allow me to read tarot, things like that. But some of you still reached out to me, you still donated to my channel, and, and that just meant the world to me because this is what I do to financially secure myself as an Earth Taurus Capricorn rising. So it just I just wanted to thank you guys who have gotten readings with me. All my readings are so special and it just it just blows my mind that people reach out to me and watch my videos. It's just it's just it's amazing and it just fills my heart. So I do have retrograde readings going on for thirty dollars. Um, this is going to be a special all throughout August. I don't even know if, if I get if it, if it gets good feedback, then I'll probably do it in July too. But basically, um, if you want to know what the retrograde season is going to offer you, I'm going to offer these readings to people. 30 bucks for a retrograde reading. And I'm going to look at your chart. Um, and I'm going to discuss all the retrogrades and what they mean and how they're affecting you according to your zodiac sign. And um, then I'm going to pull a tarot card. So there's about six planets retrograde. So for each planet that is retrograde, I will pull a tarot card for advice. So I just thought that was a kind of nice service to offer uh, for retrograde season because retrogrades are planets moving backwards. It's planets moving, slowing down, changing orbit. Mercury just went retrograde at the, on the 26th, so we can go ahead and chop that off. Mercury retrograde now. It's going to be retrograde until August 13th, I believe. So Mercury, Mars, Saturn... All these planets have gone retrograde, and Jupiter went direct this month, though. Jupiter went direct on July 10th. So other than it being retrograde season, guys, though, for those of you who want to um, contact me about that, if you're interested in a retrograde reading, please let me know. $30 special. Um, and then, yeah, the next thing there we had going on is Venus. So Venus was in uh, Leo for the first couple weeks of the month, the first week, and then we had Venus enter Virgo. So Venus is Virgo right now. I feel like Venus is going to be in Virgo for a couple more weeks, maybe. So Venus is in Virgo. Um, from On July 9th, Venus entered Virgo. July 10th was when Jupiter went direct. And then on the 13th, that's when we had that Cancer Solar Eclipse, you guys. And that was opposite Pluto. So we had a 20 degree Cancer Eclipse. And then opposite of Cancer is Capricorn, where we had the 20 degrees Pluto. So that eclipse... Eclipses are very powerful. They start new beginnings and endings, even more so than new moons and full moons. So, you know, this was an emotional eclipse. This was like a purifying, uh, cleansing, death and rebirth emotionally. Like, it was very, very powerful. So, you know, I really, really, it really sucks I wasn't here to talk to you about the Capricorn. I didn't talk about the Gemini new moon, the Capricorn full moon, or the Cancer new moon. So I'm like behind three moon cycles, but don't worry, I'm going to be back tomorrow on the 27th talking about the Aquarius full moon, lunar, blood moon, super eclipse. Crazy. I'm definitely going to be here to channel some messages for the Aquarius eclipse, guys, tomorrow. So um, next is July 22nd is when the sun enters Leo. Whoop, whoop. So we move from this emotional, deep, cardinal energy. Like we all wanted to, to, to act from our emotions in cancer season, but there was not shit that we could do. You know, cancer season is very interesting. As a Pisces, I understand this water energy, but man, was it emotional, very emotionally draining. Everyone becomes aware of their emotions. Not everybody's aware of their emotion. But when the sun enters Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, everyone becomes aware of their emotion. And when everyone becomes aware of their emotions, we all start acting from a place of emotion, which isn't normal. You know, not all of us act from a place of emotion. We all have water energy in different places in our chart. So cancer season was pretty, pretty crazy because we all wanted to, you know, be a leader emotionally. We all wanted to act out of these emotions because cancer is the cardinal water sign. Water meaning emotion, cardinal meaning action. So this is emotional action. 
um, turning into passionate fixed stability. So Leo comes in at the, ha the second half of the month to really revive our ego. You know, we go, I don't know about you, but every year in cancer season, I kind of forget that it's only a month. I'm like, well, this is it. This is how life is going to be. We're all emotional and it's water, water, water. But then Leo season comes in and Leo's the North Node right now, guys. So there's stuff about our destiny. There's stuff about um, our ego and pride and our, our authentic self-expression that's coming out here. The sun is ruled by Leo. So that's why Leo season is so symbolic because the sun is right at home. We're going to gain so much awareness over the next month, but I'm going to save a little bit of that information for the Leo video that I do and the August videos that I'm going to have coming out soon, okay? So Leo season is here. Hopefully we feel a little bit less emotional as uh, we go into August. We're still underneath the, the Cancer uh, cusp of oscillation. So there's Cancer energy, there's Leo energy, there's water energy, there's fire. But when water meets fire, there's an evaporation. So this whole month is very evaporating. You know, a lot of us is going to, a lot of us, a lot of parts of ourselves are just going to kind of mystify. You know, it's going to get a little bit steamy, a little bit, a little bit confusing. But it's all about expressing our emotion. Whenever fire and water join up together, which is Cancer and Leo, this July is shared by fire and water. And then August is shared by earth and fire. So we'll talk more about that in August. But this month was about expressing our emotion. Hopefully we express the way we feel, guys. Because the reason why we went through Cancer season was to discover what we felt on a soul level. It was to become cleansed on a maternal level, on a soul awakening level, so that we could step into Leo season knowing the direction forward, knowing our destiny of the North Node, knowing our, our passion and our, our drive, you know what I mean? Knowing who we are at a childlike level. Like Leo is all about innocence and, and becoming a child, but it's also the lion, you know, so it's about being cur courageous, you know, the things that we weren't brave enough to do at this first half of July, we're all of a sudden going to gain the passion and drive and will and, and fire to do. So there's going to be a lot of things that pick up at the end of July here, and I'm kind of going to get started on these August videos soon so that I can have these messages out sooner. And then sure enough, we end the month here with the Aquarius total lunar, total lunar eclipse on July 27th. Now, remember, Mercury went retrograde. And this, this, this eclipse here, now, I'm going to save this for my video tomorrow, but I just want you guys to keep in mind that this eclipse is conjunct Mars in the South Node. So there's going to be a lot of aggressive releasing that goes on collectively. This is some bizarre energy. This is going to be strange to kind of channel. But Aquarius is my 12th house, and um, I'm definitely... I'm definitely going to channel this Uranian, Mars, Saturnian energy. But this, this eclipse I know is going to be powerful because the, the eclipse in Cancer a couple weeks ago was so powerful too. This is going to be powerful on a collective level though. Cancer was powerful on an emotional level. This Aquarius lunar eclipse is a blood moon. It's going to be visible for two hours for most of us. Just keep, if you guys want to know about those messages, I'm going to have a video coming out tomorrow about that. But... You know, that seems to be a bit, uh, that's it for July. These messages are very intense, you guys. So I really hope that you guys are led to watch. I worked very hard trying to get these recorded by the end of the month. And another thing, you know, guys, cancer is all about the past. So I kept that in mind when I was thinking about, you know, should I do July videos? And I'm like, hell yeah. Because, you know, some of us are going to want to reflect on the month. Like, I just wanted to know what the hell was going on. I just didn't feel right, you know, letting August come in and just starting from August, like, so I, I definitely worked really hard to get these recordings um, out here, so thank you guys so much for um, tuning in and for following me, subscribing, supporting me, um, even when I took that month-long break, you know, if anything, I realized that this is my passion and this is what I want to do, I want to help people, I want to get messages from the universe and, and get some kind of guidance because holy crap, holy crap there's so much going on in the universe right now that you know the least i can do is try to help people on a spiritual level because there's i've got people that aren't even into astrology coming to me saying hey you know what the hell's going on i'm like well eclipse well cancer season so thank you guys so much for watching and tuning in hopefully uh you enjoy your readings and yeah i will see you again in august bye hi cancer what's going on guys oh oh my god am i even gonna be able to talk to you guys without crying <laughs> i'm just kidding i mean i really may cry at some point but 
Wow. I'm just basically happy to be sitting here talking to you guys. But to be honest, I'm, I like just woke up a minute ago. We're not going to say what time it is. <laughs> but I just woke up a little while ago and I don't have too much time to record uh, on my own, you know, in private. So I definitely wanted to talk to you guys in private. And um, yeah, I'm going to go drink a water real quick. So yeah, Cancer, welcome to your July very late video, and I'm sorry. Your season, Cancer season has been, wow. Your guys' energy is, you know, I'm a water sign, I'm a Pisces, Cancer's a water sign, so I get watery energy, but wowza, wow, this has been very, very intense. So this is all about your solar return, Cancer. All of this is your first house. And you've pretty much made it through cancer season um, these videos will probably be up I don't even know if they'll be up before cancer season ends they'll probably be up in Leo season but I still hope that some of you guys go back and watch for the beginning of July because mid-June start of July was all about y'all baby and all about these deep emotions and family in the past and home environment and mothers and uh, roots all these very deep 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 things that only only a cancerian would be able to control and represent every cancer season is very powerful for me so yeah my life has definitely been changing um you know we're not gonna get too too far into that but i did want to talk a little bit about the cancer new moon eclipse that we had wow that eclipse changed my life. So did the Capricorn full moon. Capricorn is your guys' opposite sign. So astrology-wise, you know, this is all about your first house of self, but we're going to be heading into your second house of resources soon. And this was the full moon in Capricorn was your seventh house of relationships. So some of you guys could have even dealt with new beginnings and endings in the relationship sector this month. And then the next full moon, well, it's an eclipse. The Aquarius lunar eclipse at the end of the month is in your eighth house. Yeah, it's in your eighth house. So, yeah, Cancer, there's definitely some astrology things going on. But to be honest with you, I really wanted to just get into your messages. Um, astrology information will be available in my intro video if you guys want to go back and check that out. And I'm also going to be uploading videos, um, so please subscribe if you would like to and be notified when I upload videos because I plan on uploading a Cancer Eclipse video. That Eclipse was so powerful. Um, I felt great that night. It was very magical. It was di directly across from Pluto. So, yeah, you know, there's a lot of information. I really wish I could have talked to you guys for that, but hell, the energy was so intense. I don't even know how I would have been on camera. It was so intense. and such a deep cleansing that took place and then we have another eclipse at the end of the month in Aquarius energy so you know cancer you're ruled by the moon so this was a very powerful new moon for you guys lots of uh hopefully setting intent for your future things like that my, com my computer's talking to you guys so cancer before we start your tarot video I think that's it astrology wise except for the fact that this is your season and the sun is literally for most of July was, you know, Cancer. I bet you guys, people don't really understand water. I bet you guys have been feeling very intense emotion and maybe even a bit melancholy, you know, or maybe just overwhelmed, you know. I'm not really super sure and how, a I'm not sure how accurate I am about the emotions of Cancer, even though I should just trust my Pisces intuition because Pisces understands Cancer. Um, but cancers don't always like how much emotion I invoke into a room. They don't always like, because cancer handles emotion a bit differently, you know. But there's definitely been a completion there. This is for cancer, July. Cancer, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Or anyone who's led to watch, cross watchers, 2018. June. I'm sorry, July. July, June. July 2018. I did just wake up, guys, but, you know, for the last couple of months, I've been recording your guys' video when I first wake up. 
And I just feel like that's best because it allows me to really be that Piscean. I mean, I like to be my Capricorn rising when I talk to you guys too. The moon, us, Cancer and Pisces. So yeah, that Cancer moon definitely, um, hopefully it balanced some things out for you guys is what I'm seeing. But it was very, very intense. And as I was saying, you know, I'm not sure exactly how Cancer's experience emotion, but you guys definitely do. I just don't think you're as expressive about it as Pisces, because Pisces doesn't have a crab shell to hide in, you know, or a scorpion shell like Scorpio. Pisces is a fish, so we just kind of swim and go with the flow, and we're really vulnerable, and we know that we're vulnerable. So I'm just shuffling here for you, Cancer. I'm going to do one more. Definitely something coming back from the past, probably. Something you thought was dead. That's that Pluto energy. This could have been a wish or something like that, because we do keep seeing the Nine of Cups. So go ahead and focus your energy, Cancer. I'm not going to talk too much, even though I have so much to talk to you guys about. Whoa. Even though I have so much to talk to you guys about, and here you are, you're already ready. The Cancer card. So I, I'm shuffling here, and we're going to take a look at your immediate energy in July. So whenever you watch this video, we're going to pull up the first four cards, because Cancer is the fourth house. And we're going to see what's right behind your energy. So we have the chariot. And I want to chan I want to look at the chariot briefly, see if there's anything jumping out at me. <sighs> hmm. Well... The chariot definitely comes up for fast forward movement, right? And if there's anything that can move a cancer fast forward or forward fastly, <laughs> it would be, you know, this cancerian energy in the universe. Because in cancer season, the best way I can put it is it just feels like I'm able to feel everybody's emotions. Like all of a sudden we're all back in water. Cancer season is the water season that follows Pisces season because the last water season we had was Pisces. And then the next water season we'll have is Scorpio. So we go a few months without water in the universe. So people get brand new. They try to, you know, close off their emotions to the world. But I'm a very, very sensitive empath. So I'm able to feel... I have to scoot up. I'm able to feel emotions like that. So Cancer, I know that you're pretty sensitive as well, being the Cardinal. But, you know, with you, Cancer, it's all about how I can move forward while I feel what I feel. And it's also about how can I move forward when everyone and their brother and mother is in my way. Because this does talk about roadblocks. It does talk about hurdles because we have these two figures, right? We have these two figures in the, in the way of the chariot. So, Cancer, there could have very well been something... Throughout July, at different times, there could have definitely been moments where you felt like there was something in your way of victory or in your way of success, or maybe it was just slowing you down. And I definitely see that you guys are doing some protecting in July because my spirit guides just led me to see the armor. So, of course, of course you're being, you're cosmic still, being ruled by the moon. Of course, there's the stars and things like that, especially with the new moon being in Cancer and this eclipse. So there's definitely some light and dark going on here, the sun and the moon, eclipse energy here. So that eclipse might have felt like something that was in your way. Or it might be something that really you really needed to control the energy in your mind. Because if there's anything about the, the chariot, it's that he doesn't need reins on these figures. He controls what's in his way in his mind. That's why there's no that's there's there's no control. There's no chains controlling these figures. He's got them controlled mentally. So that might resonate for, with, with you guys in July that anything that, whether it's light or dark, uh, anything that seems to be in your way in July or hindering your forward movement could very well possibly be controlled within the mind. So there's somewhere Cancer wants to go in July, whether it be somewhere emotionally, somewhere physically. You might not be doing any physical movement, but I just... I really do feel that, that there's somewhere you want to go. You're trying to manifest certain things for yourself in July, but there are certain things ahead of you. 
And so it's about seeing what's ahead of you, not as a roadblock, because these figures aren't necessarily a roadblock. Maybe this chariot is at a stop. Maybe it's at a standstill. Cancer season, July, could have been very much like at a standstill. I would love to know what cancer season feels like to cancer. I know that it's very consciously awaking because we have the sun in your first house. And just like I told Gemini, you know, it's not always like a super happy, fun time, your solar return, the sun returning to where it was when you were born. It's very intense. The sun is a very intense planet. You know, it's, it's ruled by Leo, and that's the energy we have coming in. We just got through the moon's energy, and now we're heading into the sun's energy. So another thing I want to tell you guys is to please watch for your moon sign this month. If you guys are, if you know your moon sign. Please watch for your moon sign because Cancer, what I realize about your energy is that you awaken the deepest parts of people, which yes, that could be their shadow side. It could be their darkness. Darkness. But also what's hidden about them because you can't really hide from Cancer. You can't hide anything from your mother, right? Cancer is the mother. Cancers are ruled by the moon. Can't hide anything from the moon. The moon always has a self of herself hidden. So... The fact that you're ruled by the moon, I would really suggest that for July messages, not only just for my videos, but for other videos on YouTube too, you might want to check your moon sign. Like for instance, I'm a Taurus moon. I watched the Taurus moon this month. Oh my goodness. So, so relatable. Cancer, you awaken the moon energy in, in people and Leo is going to reawaken our conscious sun. So you like, well, your season awakens people subconsciously to what they've been feeling all along. And Leo awakens people to their, like, awareness to their ego or something. So, yeah, Cancer, make sure you're watching for the moon because you are ruled by the moon. And make sure you pay attention to where the moon is. Like, right now, I do believe it's still in Libra. By the time you watch this, who knows? Um, you know, it's just important to see where the moon is, where the moon's transit is. Because as water signs, the moon's shift really, really affects us. Cancer, there may even be something here about your home environment this month. Because I did just take a glance there, and for, for the first time, I was really drawn to the castles in the background. Some of you may have left home this month, or maybe some of you feel like leaving home, but there's something stopping you. Because Cancer, you do rule the house of home and um, roots. So, you know, just because you rule that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be feeling that energy. Because what we represent as zodiac signs is hardly ever what we obtain ourselves so you could just be feeling that energy projecting from other people there's a lot of people who are going through home changes and stuff like that so yeah you know you definitely just look a little bit um every cancer i know is pretty just straight faced even though i can feel their emotion i don't really know what they're feeling but oh sorry we're going to uh see what you're feeling cancer pardon my dog he's just who he is so this is, uh, we're going to pull the first four cards and see what your energy is immediately in July. Okay. So we've got the Seven of Pentacles. Cancer is working very hard, or has been working very hard, even before Cancer season. This is a man who is, he's standing next to a garden that he has worked very hard on as a, fi as a farmer. I'm going to shut my door, Cancer, because I just can't. So this is symbolic for the energy that you're feeling immediately as you watch this video and as you enter July, like all of July. I thought it would be really good to, to see where everybody's energy was before the tarot reading because it's just been a long time since I've talked to you guys. So Cancer is working very hard in July. And this is a man who has been tending to a garden, right? He was there when there was no bush, when there were no pinnacles. But now he's kind of taking a break from all the work that he's put in to see if it's paid off, right? To see if there's any duds or did the flowers bloom. In, in this case, it's a pinnacle. So, Cancer, this represents something you've been working on. It's not necess It can be financial. It could have to do with the Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn Earth sign energy. But it also could have to do with your own self-worth. It could be at a job because pinnacles do represent currency. 
But the thing is, is as water signs and as human beings in general, we all value different things. So this is something you've been working really hard on in July, Cancer, that you really value. But July could be not necessarily the month where you got to work on it. It's the month where you get to kind of watch it from afar. Not too much of afar, but you get to kind of stand back. And he's taken a break from a really, really long period of time of hard work. So maybe like June, you worked really hard on something. So this is all about, you know, reaping your harvest, you know. It depends on what kind of farmer you were, Cancer. But if you were a farmer that was dedicated to this certain place, person, place, or thing, and you watered this person, place, or thing, this relationship, this job, this home environment, maybe it's, it has to do with you. But the main point here is that you, you get what you, like it takes a long, it takes dedication and hard work and commitment for anything to grow like this. So I'm seeing that Cancer is focused on the growth of something in July. They're focused on the actual real, physical, tangible, materialistic evidence of that growth too. So whether it be a, a relationship or whether it be a job environment or whether it be a project that you're working on in, in silence or in, in solitude, this is the moment where you take a step back and you you literally you count your eggs you know what I mean like you're you're seeing all right I done put all this hard work in so I'm gonna take a break and see before I continue this amount of hard work I'm gonna see if any of this has even grown to my liking you know because you're not gonna buy all these expensive chemicals and all these expensive farming tools this is a metaphor just to have a blank bush but it doesn't look like you have a blank bush cancer it looks like you've got seven pinnacles here growing. But just be careful because this is something you've done on your own. Something like there could be... I don't know if there's anything hindering your growth this month. You may feel that way. That might be why you're taking a small break. Um, but I also see something here about being victorious in the long run though. And any this, this card comes up, Cancer, to tell you that the harvest is here. So if you're standing... If you... If you, at any point in July, are checking the growth of something, if it doesn't look like it's growing, it's not. And we don't even have to get into the reasons why. I just want you to know that if something it hasn't grown by July, it's not, it's not going to grow. And it's not because of you. Because cancers are some of the most nurturing, healing people. And if there's anything a cancer would do in this situation, it would be water that bush. So this could even be a metaphor for your emotions. Could definitely have been watering a certain situation person place a thing with your emotions and it's interesting the next card we have we do have a significant Aquarius coming up here and an Aries we've got Aquarius and Aries directly in your, your behind your immediate energy so if you're not dealing with a Sun moon or rising Aquarius it's interesting because what is she doing she's watering so these are two really um, interesting cards to come up after one another because it's like a farmer and then someone who's watering it. So make sure you're watering yourself this month, Cancer. And watering people, places, and things that you want to see come to fruition. But your your harvest is here because of your birthday. And this new moon, right? And then this could also be the Aquarius lunar eclipse. You may actually find... Find the ultimate growth or not, you know, either the growth or lack of growth. You will find your answer. If you're wondering if something's going to grow, if something's worth your time, you will know for sure by the end of this month when there's that lunar eclipse. Because you've been watering from both ends of the spectrum, like this water bearer here. And you don't want to keep watering something. You know, I've seen this quote on Facebook that says, Water has no effect on fake flowers. So that's coming up for your reading, Cancer. Water has no effect on fake flowers. No matter how much you water fake flowers, they're not going to grow. They'll collect dust, but you'll never see any growth. They might last forever, but they're fake. So there's something there about that too, Cancer. And so yeah, the, the Aquarius lunar eclipse is coming up for you. And I really like these two cards, this Cancer and this Aquarius, because there's this big yellow star here, and then it's like the same yellow star that's on his head. So there is some cosmic information going on for you, Cancer, and 
to me, this is about following your destiny. It, the Aquarius is the south node, so you could be releasing things right now that are just no longer growing for you, right? Which is hard for a water sign to do because we're just very dedicated, especially emotionally. You know, we've got the emotions to spare. Ooh, you see that? I don't know what's going on with this star card, but this does this card comes up for inspiration and hope and faith. So you guys might be in for, up until for the rest of July, maybe even going into August, you guys are keeping faith in something. You're keeping hope alive for these plants. You know, it kind of reminds me of some of those some of those people that have plants in their house. And I've seen people nurse back to life plants that are just dead. You know, plants that are just, you would think that there would be no po no possible way that they could ever live again. And then, you know, you take the, the right amount of time in nurturing, right, Cancer? And you even talk to your plants and water them and all these things. And certain people have the ability to nurture, nurture things back to life. So you may see that, especially with Pluto in your seventh house, Pluto sometimes purifies things and doesn't kill them all the way there's just this new version of it right so we've got an aquarius we've got cancer staying hopeful about something they want to see come to fruition uh we've got cancer there's a, some sort of wish as well this this you could be waiting for the growth of a wish because you've had a you have a certain wish on your mind in july something that you want could be a birthday wish something you wished for for your birthday and you're staying patient and dedicated and committed to see that come to and some of you guys are trying to make the money you know to move or you're trying to just save money for a certain trip or something but it's revolved around a certain wish maybe a certain Aquarius maybe something that happens at the end of the month maybe something that gives you hope and inspiration and you're dedicated to this wish and then we have this Aries so this is your last card here so for those of you watching that have a significant Aries, Aquarius, or those who are dealing with other Cancers, they're coming up here. So if you know an Aries in your life or an Aquarius, they're, they're definitely significant for you in July. So we've got this Aries and this Aquarius. So some of you could be directly waiting to see if something's growing with an Aries or an Aquarius energy. And others of you uh, could have Aquarius and Aries energy. Like you could be a Cancer with an Aries moon or a Cancer with an Aquarius rising. But to me, this is all about, for those of you who are not resonating, resonating with, you know, an Aries, some of you may not have an Aries in your life. Well, this card comes up when it talks about authority. This is taking, this is all about you, Cancer. You know, this is your first house energy. So at the end of the day, you are going to have to check back in with yourself you know in your own authority you be your own leader this is a father figure too so some of you there's something here about a father figure because this is the father of the tarot deck and cancer you guys even the male cancers are very mothering energies you're ruled by the moon well aries is very fathery masculine figure so this is authority figures in your life um some of you guys could have some kind of wish for a promotion or you might be wishing for you know more authority in your job or maybe some of you guys are working really hard for more authority but we I definitely do see um, that there's a message here about keeping faith in yourself cancer keeping faith maybe in an Aries keeping faith in the authority that you the emotional authority that you have you know and then we, the bottom of the deck is the Knight of Swords. So all, all of this is on the table because of something that you want to see move forward very quickly. So I'm, I was kind of right about that Chariot card. This could also be a significant quick moving air sign in your life. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Aquarius has shown up kind of twice. So we've got Pentacles. We've got some Major Arcana going on here. So I do see that these are people in your life. So if you don't have an Aquarius or an Aries in your life, you have someone in your life that's very domineering, could be very manipulative, or could be very controlling, or bossy. This could be your boss at work. You could have an Aquarius boss or an Aries boss. And then some of you guys have a more helpful person in your life right now. This could be someone who 
you might have a significant Aquarius that is helping you with something this month. Um, and if not, then this is just a very helpful person who's, this could be your energy too, Cancer, but this is a very helpful person this month that's helping your, helping Cancer grow something. Helping Cancer with, with their authority. So, I see Cancer as you're watching this in July, towards the middle of July. Um, there is something here. There's, there's a, I feel a halt energy, and that's why this Knight of Swords is really going fast. And the Knight of Swords is very fast moving night, and it's a mental energy. So mentally, Cancer, there's something here about moving forward mentally very quickly, even though you can't move forward physically. Some of you are experiencing physical roadblocks right now, so why not just stop and smell the roses or, you know, stop and see, okay, before I move forward, let's see about the situation that's grown thus far. Is it worth my time? Is it worth my effort? Is it worth my hope, faith, and inspiration? Is my wish coming to, like, you know, is my wish, do I need to work harder on this? Do I need to move to the Eight of Pentacles energy where I'm working even harder? And then we have this emperor. And I feel like this is different. Some of you guys are dealing with Aries. Other you guys are dealing with a boss figure, a father figure, an authority figure. And this is some, some of you, this represents your guys' power. Because this is another cardinal energy. So, you know, it, Leo season is coming up and it is going to spark a fire. So the fact that this is like taking action, um, creative action, manifestation. You know, and it's about you keeping faith in yourself. Some of you are keeping faith in your father or you're keeping faith in the father of your children or you're keeping faith in an Aries, you know. So that's your immediate energy, Cancer. What I'm getting from that is especially the whole mental, mentally move forward thing. It's time to move forward mentally very quickly because right now Cancer is dealing with deep contemplation you know, this is what cancer feels in cancer season. These are nine swords. This is insomnia. Some of you guys might not have slept very well in July. This is nightmares. You know, our subconsciouses get very, very filled with water in your season. So for those of you who have been staying up at wee hours of the night, this is like 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., really heavy thoughts, anxiety, you know, losing sleep, insomnia, nightmares, stuff like that, mental anxiety. These are all thoughts. And I, I feel that you're in very deep emotional contemplation about something that you want to start, about something that you want to plant, about something that you want to see grow with physical value. So remember, the chariot controls what's in front of him in his mind. And it's interesting now that we have this Knight of Swords energy. Whoops. So there's something that you're waiting to become more clear on cancer before you charge forward. And you could be wanting to become more clear about your own vision, your own dreams, your own worth, value, or something that some a person, place, or thing, relationship, job, family situation that you want to see if it's going to grow. You know, is there power in this? So hopefully that resonated with some of you. Some of you are going to be feeling something like that as you watch this video but now we're gonna we're gonna pull the cards i'm using the wisdom of the house of night this month so we're gonna get you four cards to symbolize july 2018 for cancer the cardinal water sign so the first two cards are going to be symbolic for the first two weeks of the month we've already kind of went through that and then we're going to move into the future and see how we end july okay so this is for cancer sun moon rising what is the message for Cancer for July 2018? How did they, how was their July? And as I mentioned, Cancer, you guys rule the past. Capricorn rules the future. So there has been a lot about the past coming up. Past emotions, past people. And it doesn't help that we're in all these retrogrades. So let's get it. Let's, let's see what July is all about for Cancer, please. Four cards, preferably one at a time. One card to symbolize how Cancer entered July 2018. 
why does why do a lot of people get this card we've got fragments I know this card all too well cancer so you did enter July feeling a bit all over the place feeling a bit emotionally fragmented this is a card that comes up for people who feel all over people who feel like they're in fragments you know we've got this lady here you could have been feeling like a ghost of yourself and the reason why is because of listening so there was something here about listening to the different pieces of yourself going into July Cancer. Listening to, I feel that this, this is emotional. Listening to all the different ways that you feel, right? Listening to what makes you happy. We have a quote here that says, darkness does not always equal evil and light does not always bring good. So hopefully we know that by now, that light is not good, dark is not evil. So it's about listening to the dark pieces of yourself, the hidden dark pieces of yourself. And it's also about listening to the light parts of yourself, you know, what you can see, what you can't see. It's about it's about listening to all of you, Cancer, because no doubt you had you did enter July feeling a bit fragmented. But spirit wants you to know that no matter how all over the place you ever feel, even if you don't ever feel complete, you are complete in the eyes of spirit. That's why I like that card. So you could have been feeling like your lifestyle since we have a 15 up here, so I don't know if July 15th was significant for any of you, but we do have 5 plus 1, which is 6. So you could just be feeling very emotional about how in pieces your lifestyle feels, or even your health, or even your work, your of, how you are of service to others could be a little bit fragmented. So let's get the second card for Cancer. And then we are going to clarify these. So we're going to take a closer look at what was feeling fragmented or why you were feeling fragmented, Cancer. <laughs> we have the moon. Of course, your card is coming up. A Pisces, a Cancer, the moon's energy, your ruling planet. So definitely feeling emotionally fragmented moving into July. And why? Because of invisibility. There could be something here about invisible relationships with other people, friendships, co-workers, romantic, family. We have the 16. So we have the 15 and the 16. So some of you experienced something very interesting on the 15th of July and on the 16th of July. And that is right around the time of that new moon eclipse. The new moon eclipse is coming up here for you because this is invisible moon. The reason why the moon is on the table is because of invisibility. So the new moon eclipse was secretly very 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 intense for cancer energy especially cancer moon cancer sun cancer risings feeling very emotionally fragmented because of how much energy the moon was harnessing and invisible moon means new moon right on that new moon it was extremely extremely invisible in the sky every new moon is invisible in the sky so, Cancer, you could have been feeling very behind-the-scenes-ish. You could be feeling very secretive, very intuitive, very psychic and spiritual moving into July. Because we do have invisibility here. So there's something here about your reflection, taking time to reflect on what you feel, all of what you feel, Cancer. I know we're very powerful as water signs, and people don't understand how, how much we truly go through every day emotionally. Being... being moon influenced so let's take a look at the future here now that we've seen how the beginning of july is for you cancer we're going to look at how we end july so let's get the third card for cancer to see how the third week of july is going for them 2018 for the cardinal water sign i mean i'm not surprised cancer I didn't want to say it at the beginning of the reading, but I did. I always feel heavy energy from you guys, and I just don't. I'm a little bit insecure because of my Capricorn rising, but the Pisces in me always knows what my brothers and sisters, Cancers, feel. So let's see how the third week of July is going for Cancer. Let's get a card for Cancer. The Cardinal Moon, or I'm sorry, the Cardinal Water Sign. third week going of July 2018 for Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising, the 
Cardinal Water Sign, in July of 2018. Just need two more cards, Spirit, for the Cancer video for June, July of 2018, please. So this is another indication to watch your moon sign because if you're feeling fragmented at a soul level, if you're feeling fragmented emotionally or on the inside, intuitively, spiritually, then we look to our moon sign. Okay, so we have belonging coming out here. And um, there's something here about a conclusion, the ending to a chapter. Ooh, and did you see that? Cycles wanted to show itself to you. So, you know, Cancer, you are definitely a part of these cycles this month because of the new moon in Cancer, the full moon opposite you. So there's certain cycles that are coming to an end and, the, and it's so that new things can begin, right? So the reason why cycles in conclusion, this is a conclusion to a cycle. You have completed a cycle, especially a solar one, because now you're another year older. So definitely some cycles. This is the ending to a certain chapter of a cycle and the reason why is because of where you belong. Taurus got this card as well. So I feel like your emotions and the, the different the different pieces of your emotions are going to be revealing to you, Cancer, where you truly belong towards the end of July. You know, and I love that this has a really big home on it. So it's the 41. And so it's like Leo season is going to be showing you more about that and I stopped shuffling at fulfillment. So it's very important that you you know that you are you belong somewhere where your cup, cup is full and where you feel fulfilled emotionally, right? You belong there. So you're going to be doing some, you're going to find a home for all the pieces of you, Cancer, come the end of July and you're going to know intuitively where you belong as far as, you know, and that's very important for you, Cancer, because you're all about roots. You're all about family and home environment. So we've got this big old house. So that tells me that some of you guys could even be changing location where you live. But other than that, you could just be moving away. We'll see what this card is about. But I'm getting the fact that, you know, the end of July, you're really going to be stepping into a sense of belonging. You know, knowing that wherever you are at the end of July, you truly belong there. Hopefully it's a home for your emotions, all of them. So let's see the last card for Cancer 2018, the Cardinal Water Sign. How do they end July, move going to August? What is the last card here, symbolic for how Cancer ends July? Just one more card, Spirit. For the sign of cancer for july 2018 how do they end the month okay so we've got complicated coming out so we do end the month in a, on a little bit of a complicated note so you might uh have a significant aries is showing up again aries did come out for you so the cancer is watching dealing with aries you might want to watch the aries video because they had complicated as well so there could be some some complicated stuff going on there between you and an aries and we have individual so the reason complicated came out is because it's about your individuality, Cancer. You want to make sure at the end of July that you're really doing things for yourself, that you're really doing things, you know, to help you to heal yourself. Water signs can be very nurturing, um, but things can get complicated if we, you know, lose ourselves the same way we did at the beginning of the month to other people, places, and things so that your individuality is coming up. This is actually the final underlying energy. So... This whole reading has to do with you, Cancer. Pardon me one moment. I'm actually going to pause this real quick, Cancer, and then um, I'll get back to your reading. I have an important message I need to respond to. I'm so sorry. I'll be right back. All right. I'm sorry about that, guys. I had to respond about what I, about what I wanted to eat later, honestly. <laughs> And I am so indecisive. So anyway, let's get back to this reading. We're going to start clarifying um, after I take a kind of an overall look here at what this message seems to be. So we already know that July is a lot about you, Cancer, because it makes sense because individuality is a part of this first house. And it's Cancer season, you're a Cancer. 
Cancer is all about, you know, you as a Cancer, as, a, as your first house of self, you know, your identification, your identity. So this is all about, July is all about you as an individual, even when we go into Leo season. Then it's going to be about what you value individually, okay? So this has a lot to do with you being the, the different parts that make you who you are, Cancer, because we do have fragments. This is one of my... It's like not one of my favorite cards because of a good reason. It's just a card that comes out a lot for me and it comes out a lot for my personal readings for water signs. So water signs just feel like we can feel fragmented pretty easily, even though it's kind of hard to separate water. You know, you pour it into a container and it's pretty much there. But, you know, maybe that's why we feel fragmented sometimes. Because of how easily we're, we are poured into different environments, sometimes we can lose our sense of individuality. So the first two weeks of July looked a bit emotional for you, Cancer. They looked a little bit emotionally fragmented. Maybe you didn't really know how you felt about a certain thing. And I don't want you guys to beat yourself up for that or feel like that's unnormal for Cancer season. Because like I mentioned... Just because we represent something in astrology does not mean we can that we represent it for ourselves. We actually represent it for others. We represent that energy as a whole on the zodiac wheel, and we hardly ever reap the reward of what we represent. So, for instance, Cancer represents home and mother energy. Well, a lot of Cancers I know struggle with the home environment. They don't like where they live, and they also have, you know, issues with their mother like Pisces, I'm the pa Pisces is the house of spirituality and, you know, dreams and illusion. And we're like the most psychic sign aside from you, Cancer. And I don't listen to my visions very well. Like I literally see the future. I will literally know the future. I will get visions in my sleep and I don't always even listen to my own intuition. So it's like, what, what, what's the purpose, you know? So my cards are definitely telling me that you were very fragmented under the surface. Some of you were feeling very fragmented at a soul level, feeling very fragmented emotionally or intuitively or spiritually. There's this something about this moon that made things all over the place. It made things kind of in pieces, right? Because that's what it means to be fragmented, is to be kind of all these different pieces, right? At a soul level, you could even be feeling that your soul was in pieces at the beginning of July. I mean, that's how intense this cancer energy can be. It can really dissect the soul and get really deep especially this eclipse it really eclipsed a lot of those pieces out so some of you could have been um feeling this way under the surface in a in a hidden way you know cancers sometimes hide how they feel and i can feel that cancer hides how they feel and so when i ask a cancer how they feel and i feel a tidal wave come over me but they just say you know I'm okay it's just like they might do a little bit of explaining but you guys are very secretive being ruled by the moon so no one might not even know which I don't know if it's better or worse to to be able to hide all these different pieces of you especially when you're focusing on you as an individual so I do see that I think you guys understand that we you enter July feeling pretty fragmented under the surface, feel pretty fragmented at a soul level. I feel like your feelings were a bit all over. Maybe you didn't really know how to feel about something, and maybe you were keeping that a secret. Maybe you're keeping um, certain things. Just you're kind of just behind the scenes, because we do have the second week about the moon, which is your the new moon. That new moon eclipse was very powerful for you as an individual. We've got this black cat here, you know, very spiritual, very feminine energy, the moon's energy, the mother's energy. We have the moon showing up. Some of you could be dealing with a Pisces. There is a, a very, maybe one or two of you could be dealing with a Pisces energy because the moon is the Pisces card. Um, and this Pisces could be causing you to feel in fragments or there could be just something here about a Pisces who's, who's in fragments. You know, you, you don't really understand it, but... Think about how it would be if you put all these pieces together, all these fragmented pieces together, you know, then it would be a full picture. So we're going to take a brief look at fragments, 56, just so I can get a better idea. Sometimes it seems that life is split into so many parts, all of them separate and difficult to bring together. Family, friends, work, study activities can all seem unrelated to each other. My child, you are always whole. 
even if at times things feel separate and fragmented. That is the only illusion. Okay, so we've got an illusion here, the illusion of fragments. You weren't in pieces, Cancer, even though you felt that way. It literally says here that there this was the, that is the only illusion. You know, things things being separate is an illusion. So we've got a very powerful message coming up here for you. Choosing this symbol reminds you that all of the moving parts of your life are important. If the only one you're asking about seems confusing, focus on the one that brings you clarity. Be here now and know that I love you and see as see you as beautiful and whole, regardless of how disconnected things seem. Also remember to take a step back when you're trying to understand something. You may be looking at one piece of a giant puzzle, a fragment of truth. See the big picture through my eyes, no matter what, all is well. So two things here, Cancer. I have always said as a Pisces that separation is the greatest illusion. This is why we have war. This is why this is why we are misunderstood. This is why we're not connected as humanity because we all feel that color and, and, and uh, finances and all these different things separate us, right? Well, separation, which is another word for fragment, is the greatest illusion, the moon. The moon is all about illusion and secrets, right? So that was one big message that came out. And then also um, the fact that it said You may be looking at one piece of the puzzle, and it might be a fragment of truth. So the moon sometimes can be secrets. It can be something that's hidden from you. So there could be certain pieces of the puzzle that is hidden from you in July, Cancer. I'm seeing that here, that there's a certain pieces of the puzzle that are, that are hidden. And it could be, you know, why at the beginning of your reading you were at a halt. There was something in your way, right? So... I feel like that's the message there for the first first couple weeks. Well, the first half of the month is that yes, you there were there were some cancers feeling fragmented. They're feeling separated from the soul. They're feeling like their soul is in pieces. But there's even a greater message here about you feeling that way because of a, the grand illusion that needed to be cast over the world for cancer season. The illusion of our deep emotion, even though they're very real, that it's just a small piece of us though, you know. And so there is something here about the illusion of being in pieces, the illusion, the illusion of being fragmented. You're not fragmented, Cancer. You are the moon. The moon is always whole, even if this is just a phase, Cancer. There's a time to wax. There's a time to wane. There's a time to be completely dark. There's a time to be completely full. So it's almost like you understand this probably as a character who's ruled by the moon. And there is a small portion of you that are dealing with the hidden and missing pieces to something. You know, we have this this figure here who's pretty ghostly, right? There's, there's a kind of a spirit there. So there's something here about your soul and your spirit, you know, being as one and not being separated. No longer separating the pieces of your spirit from, from what you feel or the pieces of your spirit from what you see or what you, what you are at a soul level. So after that huge, like that right there, I can feel energy from that. So the, the this first half of the month was so deep for Cancer, of course. It was so deep for you as an individual. Going through, like I have no idea what the universe did individually to all you guys to get this message across. You, you were made to feel certain things. Certain things happen in your life because of this eclipse. So I do feel some pretty heavy energy there, but just know it was to teach you these very universal lessons that separation is an illusion, that you know certain pieces have to be hidden from us until we're ready to see the whole picture type of thing. And so the end of the month, we're going to start validating these. The end of the month, you, you come into some, some, some sort of sense of belonging. Maybe you realize where, where home really is, you know. Maybe that was something that was in fragmented, your home environment. You know, maybe you didn't really know where you belonged because you definitely don't belong in a place of fragment. You belong in a place of happiness. You belong in a place of, you know, where your lifestyle feels complete, somewhere where you can be. Home is so important to cancer. You guys are the crab, you know. So it's really important <laughs> as I'm talking about home. So I'm going to go ahead and put this here on fragments because that is what I was. And so you really want to watch the Taurus reading because Taurus got... The Ten of Cups with belonging, and you're getting the Ten of Cups with fragments. So, yes, 
Cancer was feeling very emotionally fragmented coming into July. You you weren't feeling very complete in a relationship or in a home environment. You're like waiting for your ships to come in. The reason why the Ten of Cups is in fragments is because you were waiting for, you know, a call back about a certain apartment or you were waiting for certain good news, something that was emotionally fulfilling. Some of you may have children. Some of you could be in marriages. But this here is in fragments. The reason why fragments is on the table is because of the Ten of Cups. So that tells me that there was an emotional completion that was kind of in pieces. Remember, this is an illusion, though. But you had to be patient. It is about being patient. Some of you are dealing with a Sagittarius. But this is about balance. So there was something here about all the pieces of your different emotions. Like, all these cups are in fragments. They're shattered for you, Cancer, this month, going into July. So let's see why the moon is here. We already know that you were waiting for your emotional ships to come in. You know, we're, you're, it is your home environment that is fragmented. There's a lot of you watching this that there's something about your home environment that just doesn't seem right. And even if it's something small, because you're a cancer, it's very important to you. And now we have the tower. So there, it's very true that some of you guys dealt with a secret ending of some sort the the full the I feel like the the new moon and the cancer new moon eclipse felt a lot like this to some of you guys where you know it just brought sudden this does not have to be bad but this is emotional this is something falling apart emotional even though it was already in pieces this is something going falling apart on a soul level this is something falling apart in a hidden way something that you were intuitive about you knew it was it was gonna fall apart and you know this is a relationship for some of you. This is a home environment for some of you. I feel like there's a group of cancers that are going to be drawn to watch this video that are definitely dealing with, well, I don't know how it is at the end. Hopefully we have a comeback, but we do end on a complicated note, complicated belonging. So there's something here about your home life. Cancer, please, please accept that because you represent the home right you literally if you look up the fourth house in astrology it is all about home and family and that's exactly what's going on here that's exactly what's there's some secrets in the home life right now that you're able to feel and there's something falling apart here that was that once made you happy but now it's all in pieces so this is a very very interesting reading here so let's go into the, the second half and then we'll start looking at that the reason why the tower is on the table is because of the knight of wands so it could be because of a Sagittarius, Aries, Leo. There's a there's a group of Cancers out there that are with fire signs. And something could have fell apart with a significant fire sign. Um, but other than that, some of you guys were just trying to move forward very passionately. But you were met with lightning. You know, the, your, your tower, your home was struck by lightning. The tower was struck by lightning. So let's see about belonging. Why is belonging here? For cancer 2018 July why is belonging here clarify belonging for me please now this card does talk about belonging in the house of night so belonging in this energy of mysticism in hidden energy you know you've got the moon you've got fragments you've got belonging those are very very melancholy secretive psychic mysterious energies cancer i mean all water signs pisces cancer and scorpio were very deep okay so we've got the nine of cups all right belonging in the nine of cups even though the ten of cups is fragmented and the reason why you belong in a place of wish fulfillment is the page of swords so you guys at the end of the month you could be receiving some sort of message it could be from an air sign a gemini libra aquarius um but i see Around the third week of July, maybe uh, maybe the end of July, you guys are going to be receiving a very happy message about a home or a very happy message about belonging with a person, place, or thing. Belonging at a job. There's a lot of places and a lot of different things we can belong to, right? But you belong in a state of emotional fulfillment. Now, it's kind of interesting. We have the Ten of Cups and the Nine of Cups. So there was something, there was some kind of completion that fell apart, literally. And it was be so that you could get some some sort of wish fulfillment cancer. So now things, this is definitely a comeback. And you could have somebody spying on you. This is a spying energy. This is a some. This is a very short message because it's a, it's the page. 
So it's a message and it could be very quick. It could be a quick yes or no. It could be um, a letter or an email or something like that. So I'm getting, I'm getting some different messages here. You guys, I feel like the majority of you are going to receive some kind of message about a wish that you had. Now, remember when we first started doing your reading, we had the, the star card. Remember, you're working hard on a wish. So by the end of July, you're probably going to see that, that wish come to fruition because you're going to get a call back about a job or you're going to get a call back about an apartment or maybe someone that you that you deal, dealt with a breakup with is going to contact you again and say, hey, you know, I'm not emotionally complete without you. I miss my family, things like that. So there's like a very emotional wish coming true for you. It was in fragments at the beginning of the month. Remember, th this was an illusion though. Things fell apart in secret. Things fell apart on a soul level. Things fell apart in your home just to build up this wish at the end of the month. So there's some kind of message coming in about that. And look, we have another message. This is something you manifested. This could be with a Pisces. I see Pisces for you, Cancer. Um, or I see some kind of love offer spying on you, a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, but it doesn't have to be that. It could just be emotional communication. This could be emotional offer from any sign. The Knight of Cups is offering a cup of love. So I feel like you guys are going to, for some of you, this is a love offer coming back to communicate. For others of you, this is just a, something that you wished for and that you manifested because we do have the Magician. You manifested it. And it could be Mercury retrograde because that is a Mercury. So let's see why this complicated card is here. Why is it complicated? Oh, we just had a, a few cards pop out. And I'm not going to... Okay. We have the Fool in Reverse, the King of Pentacles, and the Three of Cups. And the Five of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. So this is just a message coming out. It might have to do with why some of you are feeling complicated at the end of the month. Maybe you're not willing to take a risk with a Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, or you're not willing to take a risk with a financial situation. Um, and it, some of you are dealing with a third party situation. There's an earth sign that has someone on the side. Um, that might be the story going on here for some of you. Um, maybe there's an earth sign that doesn't want to take a risk with you. There's, there's another Aries here. By the end of this month, this Aries is upside down. So be careful about your Aries friends at the end of the month um, but what I really see here is there's not a there's not there's a earthly risk that is not being taken um, because of a third party but then there's another storyline here about you know not taking a risk because you're celebrating financially or in the home so we've got the fool in reverse not taking a risk the king of Pentacles which is a Taurus Virgo Capricorn or your finances your home environment so some of you might not be willing to risk your finances because of how happy you are. You're not willing to take a new job, but it's complicated because some of you want the job, you want to take the risk, but others of you have, um, yeah, because you're, you're not going to take a risk because you don't want to wind up in poverty. You know, there's a new beginning here, but it's complicated and you're not sure if you're willing to risk it. So let's see why complicated is here because that was kind of a, a um, sloppy shuffle and they fell on the ground. So I'm just going to shuffle and have one card come out so that we know very clearly why Cancer is ending July with complication. And I will let you know, Aries got this card as well. Aries got complicated. So you could be dealing with some complications with an Aries for sure at the end of the month. So let's see why complicated is here for Cancer for 2018, July. All right. So we have a Queen of Pentacles showing up for an underlying energy two queens so some of you guys could be dealing with a complicated air sign or a complicated earth sign some of you guys could be dealing with complicated thoughts communication words maybe com complicated clarity so for some of you this is a complicated air sign in your life a Gemini Libra Aquarius others of you are dealing with the complicated clarity that you you gained over this tower Right, because we have the moon, which is unclear energy, something that's hidden. This is something that isn't hidden. This is someone, uh, someone who gained clarity over something. And the reason why the Queen of Swords is on the table is because of the Queen of Pentacles. So, I do feel like there's a certain handful of you guys watching that are dealing with something financial, because we have the Queen, the King of Pentacles first, 
And now we have the Queen of Pentacles showing up with the King of Wands. So male fire sign, female earth sign, Queen of Swords. So there is a hint of a third party here. But what it really is, Cancer, is that you guys are starting a new financial journey. Um, and you're trying to balance home and work. And you're trying to stay clear-minded after after you get what you want emotionally, right? After a water sign gets what they want emotionally, then we are we are we do turn into the queen or king of swords or whatever. So there might be some complicated communication, some complicated conversations that you need to have about your finances or about your home or about your worth or value, because the queen is kind of facing this king, queen. The queen of the queen of swords is speaking to this queen so you guys might be speaking to earth signs at the end of the month complicated what i really see this as yes there could be a few of you that are speaking having very interesting complicated conversations with the taurus virgo capricorn it could be your boss i see it as a female a female earth sign um especially the female cancers you guys are going to be doing a lot of talking to female earth signs and but it doesn't have to be that Okay, in general, what I see here is some complicated conversations about, you know, your finances, your worth, your job, your career, your home. Because the Queen of Pentacles balances home and work life, right? That might be what was going on up here. The fragments of work life, home life, family life, love life. And we do have a hint of love life. I feel like there's some of you guys who experienced a breakup um, at the beginning of the month. But th that might be coming back around. I'm not sure. You... You find where you belong, though. You guys, There's some of you who find out the job that you belong in at the end of the month. Some of you find out where you belong as an individual. Some of you guys find out where you belong mentally, spiritually, emotionally. Who you belong with as far as a relationship. Where you belong when it comes to, like, where you live, where you want to live. But definitely some fragmented emotion at the beginning of the month. Right? There's a There was something family-related. There was something home related. There was something emotionally related that was in fragments. So you were not feeling very emotionally fulfilled or complete coming into July. You felt very, most of you felt very emotionally. There was some sort of emotional completion that was fragmented and all over the place, right? There was certain pieces. I see these 10 of cups as different, each different way that you feel. Cancer felt 10 different ways coming into July. And then there was this kind of like this moon was very changing energy and it's for some of you it changed your very foundation right this new moon in cancer on the 13th of july it, it was very much like a lightning bolt that struck something on fire because it was in too many pieces under the surface so this is that some of you guys could have dealt with the breakdown of your soul or a very secretive intuitive this could have you could have felt this intuitively or psychically some of you guys could have dealt with the loss of a Cancer or a Pisces in your life. But I feel like this is just an emotional breakdown. Um, and I feel like this was, um, you know, something at a soul level, like a soulmate, right? But we got the tower there with the moon. So that tells me that that moon really did cause some endings and beginnings. Now, it doesn't have to be a scary, bad thing, you know. So whatever happened at, in, whatever happened at the beginning of July... That, that kind of mimics this energy, especially around the 13th, 14th, 15th. Just know that it was happening for a very specific reason. Because now this is really interesting that we have you belonging, even though your home environment, your emotions are fragmented. Well, Cancer, you belong with everything you could possibly ever want. You belong in a sense of wish fulfillment. You belong in a place of success and victory, right? This is a man who is surrounded by everything he wants. Now, even though this is one cup less than the Ten of Cups, this is still a really good energy. This is a wish fulfillment. So your wishes are being fulfilled towards the end of the month. Whatever wish you were working on, your happiness, you know, you, some of you may have a wish for a certain home environment or a wish for, you know, a certain sense of belonging. Well, I just see that you guys belong in a place of emotional happiness, whether that's with or without the family life. But then, you know, there's something here that causes some kind of complication, you know, getting your wishes met. It causes some kind of sense of irony or complication because now we have the Queen of Swords in the complicated card. So to me, we end the month here with a little bit of complicated mindset. You know, mentally, it could be kind of complicated to process everything that happened in July. 
we're gonna all all of us are gonna want clarity at the end of july because cancer season was not the most clear you know it was very moon energy which is hidden beneath the surface secretive illusion had to be very psychic psychic and intuitive so yeah we're all gonna embody this kind of queen of swords energy and i feel like the queen of swords is here to validate the complicated card because this is you taking initiative to you know speak your truth about what's complicated and to gain mental clarity about what's complicated too this is you demanding mental clarity about july heading into august you're headed you're headed into august in a very with a very clear mind at all costs you know and like i said there is a few of you that are going to be communicating about there's going to be some complicated communication at the end you know even though you have everything you want after everything falls down you know this is about you communicating about your finances communicating about your your values about your job communicating with a boss some of you are going to be communicating with a boss telling them hey you know i'm not going to do this i'm not going to take this job because it's too much of a risk some of you are not going to be taking back an earth sign because of what happened up here there was some of you there was an earth sign taurus virgo capricorn energy that that something happened at the beginning of july and so at the end of july when you get everything you want you know you, you you're gonna be the queen of swords not that loving cancer like you're gonna be a, a little bit people might see you as, as being complicated because of how clear you are about what you want now well you don't just go through cancer season and figure out the illusion of fragment like cancer did and then not wind up as a very clear minded individual right so they're just gonna have to understand the complicated frame of mind that you have been forced to reach about your home environment about where you belong about your wish fulfillment about your emotions your soul so i do feel the need to say that there is a significant earth sign at the end of july for you cancer um and there could be some pretty pretty interesting conversations coming up there but that's just for some of you for the most part, you guys are just becoming a, a, a stronger individual. You know, you're you're becoming more financially balanced coming into August. And, you know, you're becoming more clear-minded. You're starting to handle the complications in your life like the Queen of Swords. She handles them without emotion. So, you know, a lot of this that happened, Cancer, it might have been to push you into a more platonic energy there could be people places and things in your life that you need to handle more platonically more emotionless kind of more cold especially if they're causing complications in your life or lack of clarity but i just keep seeing you guys communicating with an earth sign so for those of you who do not resonate with that you're communicating about your finances about a job or about a home about your family about your values about your career or you might be communicating about, you know, some of you guys could be cutting off somebody from financially, like, borrowing money and stuff, too. So I'm interested in what's going on here at the end of the month with this conversation happening between this queen and this queen. Even for the male cancers watching, you could have two females, and there's a lot of female energy here. You know what I mean? So if you're a male cancer, you need to choose one of these women, either the air sign or the earth sign. You know, do you want the Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, or do you want the Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn? And for the male, or I'm sorry, for the female Cancers, you know, you could also be choosing between an Earth sign and an Air sign, or choosing between something that fell apart. You know what I mean? But yeah, guys, there's definitely some interesting. You know, with the Moon card here, and I just said this to Gemini uh, last night that when I have a reading with the Moon card in it. I can talk for hours and hours and hours and I'm still not going to be completely clear about what the reading meant. So we do have the moon here for you, Cancer, to tell you, especially regarding anything that fell apart in July for you, whether it was inner, whether it was at a soul level, whether it was an actual physical falling apart energy. This is just a really abrupt ending, right? This is a Scorpio-Pluto card. Some of you guys could be dealing with that, a very secretive Scorpio or secretive Pluto energy. Which is interesting because Pluto was definitely featured in the full moon in Capricorn. But yeah, guys, you know, the moon is here to tell you to follow your own intuition. And, you know, follow your own visions that you've had as an individual. Some of you guys have an earth sign, fire sign, air sign coming up very strongly, okay? Sag, Leo, Aries, 
Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. So you could be communicating. Um, and then there's a Taurus showing up here now too. So for some of you, this is definitely a Taurus. But there's this fire sign and this earth sign and this air sign. So we've got pretty much all the elements there, okay? But I'm just going to leave you with follow your own intuition, Cancer, about this reading because I'm being blocked by the moon. You know what I mean? When I get a reading with the moon in it, I know that there's just certain elements to the reading that are hidden to, to, you know, to protect the individual. So hopefully this reading helped. Hopefully this resonated with you guys. I, I really hope so because it's your birthday. It's happy birthday. Can't believe I haven't said that yet. But happy birthday to you guys. I really hope your solar returns were everything you wanted. I know they were a bit emotional, obviously. But you're another year older, you are wiser, you have completed a cycle, obviously. And, you know, it's it's going to be good from here. We're going to have the sun move into Leo, the sun's going to move into Virgo, then Libra. The sun's going to move away from you, and it put you in less of a spotlight, okay? You guys have been in the spotlight in the universe, so, you know. You just, um, just get through it, Cancer, and Leo season is literally days away. So you have successfully completed Cancer season 2018. Ah, oh, very, very, very heavy emotionally, obviously. So guys, if you would like to speak to me on a more personal level, then all my information can be found in the description box. I am offering um, a retrograde reading special for the rest of July, all of August. Um, so if you'd like to know, take a look, closer look at the retrogrades and your chart and how they're affecting you, I will pull a tarot card and talk to you more about all the different retrogrades and what they mean. That's $35, so you can just kind of, you can look at my PayPal link, forward me $35, and I will know, you can just put a side note, hey, retrograde reading for me, please. And yeah, I will record a video and send you a private link to YouTube. That's how I do my readings. So I would love to work with you guys on a, on a more deep level. Cancer and Pisces, always a good time. Always very emotional and spiritual. So, you know, that's all always available, personal readings. And other than that, just keep a, keep a lookout for all the videos I'm going to be uploading coming into August. I plan on putting out um, a video about that Cancer Eclipse. I plan on putting out Chiron videos and Mars videos. And a lot of other ideas that I'm coming up with, guys. So just be on the lookout for me. You might want to hit that notification bell so that you're notified. But other than that, guys, I hope you had a great July. And I hope you go into July or August feeling strong-minded and clear. And I will talk to you guys in August. See you later.